Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge International AS and A level biology paper for A level structured question October November 2021 paper 42. In this video we are going to be solving question number 6 to question number 10. Question number 6a. ATP is needed for many metabolic processes in living organism. Describe the properties of ATP that make it suitable for its role as the universal energy currency. So basically ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate or ATP is very water soluble. So it is easily transported around the cell and ATP can easily lose its phosphate group when it is hydrolyzed by any ATPase enzyme. So once it loses its phosphate group, it releases a small packet of energy, which then can be used for other you know, immediate functions, wherever it is needed. So hydrolysis of ATP releases energy immediately. ATP can be easily recycled from ADP. It can be combined with inorganic phosphate and then energy can be given and then it will convert back to ATP and it can be easily recycled back and forth again and again. Part two, suggest why ATP is needed for protein synthesis. So basically ATP is needed for unwinding the DNA. When DNA is in double helix, it is needed for unwinding the DNA. ATP can also activate the RNA nucleotides which will be then used for synthesizing the mRNA. ATP is also needed for peptide bond formation when the amino acids are hold together. And they are also, ATP is also needed for moving the mRNA to the ribosome. Part B. Figure 6.1 is a diagram of a mitochondrion. We can see the diameter of the mitochondrion is 0.72 micrometer and the length of the mitochondrion is about 5.25 micrometer. Now inside the mitochondrion we can see for example, we can see the we can see the uh, uh, outer membrane. We can see E, which is the inner membrane. A is the matrix. B is the intermembrane space. And C, it can be ribosome. The question says complete table 6.1 using the letters A to E in figure 6.1. Each letter may be used once, more than once or not at all. The site of Krebs cycle. So we know the site of Krebs cycle will be matrix. A phospholipid bilayer impermeable to H plus ion. This will be the inner membrane. The site of translation. This is going to be the ribosome. So matrix is A. Inner membrane is E or D, and for site of translation is going to be C. Assume that the mitochondrion in figure 6.1 is a cylinder. Calculate the surface area of this mitochondrion. Use the formula surface area of cylinder 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h. So, if we want to find out the surface area of the cylinder, in this case the cylinder is the mitochondria. Is going to be 2 into pi into r squared. So the diameter is given 0 0.72 micrometer, 0 0.72 micrometer. The radius is going to be 0 0.36 micrometer. So 2 pi r squared will be 0 0.36 whole square multiplied by 2 pi r which is 0 0.36 into h. Height will be 5.25 from the diagram. So the surface area comes to 12.69, which is equivalent to 12.7. So the surface area is 12.7 micrometer square. Part 3. The inner membrane of the mitochondria has a much smaller, much larger surface area than the outer membrane because of the presence of cristae. Different cell types vary in number of cristae present per mitochondrion. Cardiac muscle cells have mitochondria with a very large number of cristae. 
suggest and explain why cardiac muscles have mitochondria with a very large number of cristae. So basically more cristae means there will be more electron transport chain present in that particular cristae. Because cristae houses the electron transport chain as you can see in the diagram and also houses the ATP synthase. So more cristae which will result in more electron transport chain and, and as a result there will be more oxidative phosphorylation. Cardiac muscle cells generally have uh, you know, mitochondria with very large number of cristae because cardiac muscle cells must undergo continuous contraction and muscle contraction requires energy. Seven A. The Labrador is a variety of domestic dog. Labradors have fur that can be brown, black, or yellow. In Labradors, TYRP1 is one of the genes that codes for fur color. This gene has two alleles, capital B and small b. The dominant allele, capital B, codes for the enzyme tyrosinase that function in the pathway to produce melanin, leading to black fur. The production of melanin in Labradors is very similar to the production of melanin in humans. The recessive allele small b codes for an enzyme that results in the production of a brown form of melanin, leading to brown fur. Outline how melanin may be produced in Labradors to produce black fur. So basically, we, all we have to discuss over here is that how melanin is generally produced. We know that for producing melanin, tyrosine has to be converted to dopaquinone. And then the dopaquinone will be converted to melanin in the melanocyte cell. Part B. Another gene, MC1R, interact with TYRP1. MC1R has two alleles, capital E and small e. The dominant allele, capital E, allows the alleles for TYRP1 to be expressed. The recessive allele, small e, prevents the allele of TYRP1 from being expressed. When no form of melanin is produced, the Labrador will have yellow fur. Okay. Construct a genetic diagram to show the ratio of possible offspring to from a cross between a black male Labrador, heterozygous for both genes and a yellow female Labrador, heterozygous for TYRP1. Okay, so first of all, uh, when it is black, all right, and the black male is heterozygous for both genes. So the parental genotype, all right, so uh, should have capital B and small b because it is heterozygous. And for uh, MC1R, we are going to have capital E and small e because it is heterozygous for both. And for YOLO, we must have small e and small e. And uh, basically for YOLO, they already say that it is heterozygous. So it will be capital B and small b for the melanin. All right. So from here, the gametes that we receive, the gametes can be capital B, capital E, capital B and small e, small b and capital E, small b and small e. And for yellow, we're going to get capital B, small e, and uh, the other option is uh, small b and small e. All right, so these are the options for the gametes that we are going to be producing. Okay, now the offspring genotype. Definitely, if it is a combination,
since in the first three of them we can see there is capital E present we can see there is capital E present in the first two of them there is capital E present and with a capital B so thereby they're going to be black it's going to be black we're going to get a yellow over here and then we are going to get another yellow we are going to get a yellow over here another yellow over here and there's going to be another black and finally there's going to be one brown so we get a ratio of three blacks with four yellow and one brown part two state the term used to describe a protein that is involved in the control of gene expression in eukaryotes so gene expression in eukaryotes is controlled by transcription factor question number eight 20 million years ago an ocean covered with the area where the country of panama is now located so 20 million years ago our ocean covered the area where the country of panama is now located there was a gap between the continents of North America and South America through which the waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean flowed freely. The pork fish Anis Anisotremus sp lived in this area between North America and South America. Figure 8.1 shows a pork fish. About 3 million years ago, volcanic activity and sedimentation formed a narrow strip of land. Panama joining north america and south america figure 8.2 shows the area 20 million years ago and now 20 million years ago we can see that uh, the north uh, the north america the north america region and the south america they were separated all right now there is a region called panama all right 20 million years ago pork fish in the atlantic and pacific ocean were able to breed successfully and produce fertile offspring Explain why Atlantic pork fish and Pacific pork fish are not able to breed successfully to produce fertile offspring. So basically, the Panama land formation separated the population of pork fish due to geographical isolation. So there were no gene flow between these both of the population because they couldn't travel across the land. Random mutation occurred naturally within the population and due to different environmental conditions different alleles were selected for within the separated population over time the populations have accumulated different morphological behavioral features and eventually reproductive isolation has occurred this is an example of allopatric speciation brought about by geographical isolation Question number 9a. Describe the role of ADH and the collecting ducts in osmoregulation. So basically, osmoreceptors are actually located in the hypothalamus. So they can, osmoreceptors have the ability to detect changes in water potential. All right, changes in water potential of the blood. So low water potential will cause the posterior pituitary gland to release a hormone called ADH into the blood. As the ADH binds to the receptor cells on the cell surface membrane of the collecting duct cells of the kidney, the ADH will stimulate enzyme cascade in the collecting duct cell. This will cause vesicles containing aquaporin to move towards and fuse with the cell surface membrane of the collecting duct cells. And this makes the collecting duct cells more permeable to water because there are more aquaporins now and water moves down the water potential gradient by osmosis into the collecting duct cells and then into the blood until water potential of the blood returns to set point and the ADH is broken down. Nine B, the question says, describe the structure of a motor neuron. 
So when describing the structure of a motor neuron, we have to talk about motor neuron have dendrites which are attached to its cell body. Now the motor neurons cell body consists of many mitochondria. There is a nucleus and there is a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Motor neuron has long axon and their axon is myelinated, meaning they are covered with spawn cell. Motor neurons have synaptic knobs at their terminal branches where they terminate with neuromuscular junction or any glands. Motor neurons cell body is in the brain and the spinal cord, all right? And the ending portion of it is usually in the neuromuscular junction or in the glands. Question number 10a. Explain how dipstick function to test for glucose in a sample of urine. Now we have to understand that dipsticks have immobilized enzymes. And when these immobilized enzymes are dipped in urine, all right, the immobilized enzyme glucose oxidase and peroxidase reacts with the glucose. So first of all, the glucose oxidase reacts with the glucose to give hydrogen peroxide. And then this hydrogen peroxide will then be reacting with a colorless substance, all right, to give color. The color obtained in stick can be compared with a chart. More glucose gives darker color. However, it doesn't give current blood glucose concentration. Question number 10b. Explain the control of gibberellin synthesis and outline how gibberellin stimulates stem elongation. For gibberellin, dominant allele codes for functional enzyme. So if, if it has a uh, you know, dominant allele, it will code for functional enzyme. However, the enzyme then produces active gibberellin. Della protein inhibits transcription factor. Della protein's main job is to inhibit the transcription factor. However, gibberellin, when it binds to the receptor complex, the complex then can bind with an enzyme which can cause the breakdown of the della protein. Now, this makes the transcription factor free and they can bind with the DNA. And growth genes are then switched on. Auxin is produced and auxin causes cell elongation. The cell wall loosens in presence of the auxin by pumping hydrogen ion into the cell wall and activating an enzyme known as expansins. Expansin causes the cell wall to loosen up and thereby once the cell absorbs water, it can increase in size. So the cell can then expand when water enters the cell, causing the cell elongation. This also increases internode length in rice plants. Guys, today we are done with the video. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and comment on the video if you want anything uh, for us to improve or uh, if you have any question paper in mind that you want us to solve before. Uh, so uh, let us know in the comments and definitely we'll look forward into it. And like the video, share it with your friends if it helps you. And see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.